Well, good evening, everybody. Well, I think it's, it's quite in order that I would also like to extend my special thanks for organizers and the hosts for inviting me so that I can contribute to this very important event uh, on UNESCO International uh, Symposium. Um, you will realize from the title that it's, it's, it's basically the study that was conducted in Namibia, but I'm from Dar es Salaam for the reasons that this is the work that was conducted by one of my students who is currently living in, in, in Namibia. And uh, she was supposed to come and present, but she couldn't come for some reasons. Um, what I'm going to talk here basically is to try to share with you the experience that we had in terms of applying one of method for assessing the river health as well as the water quality uh, situation in Orange River in Namibia. And in this particular title, uh, the, 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 the thing that I would like you to draw into attention is about this what you call SAS. SAS stands for South African Scoring System. So basically is, is the system trying to assess the river health and more importantly is on scoring aspects. That being the case, um, the, the, the structure or rather the frame of my presentation is such that I've just got four points to talk. Um, number one, I would like to contextualize things. And then number two is share with you the approach that we used in applying this technique, that's SAS. And in a nutshell, the, the main highlights from the study and what is that we have as a conclusion. Um, it's something that I don't want to dwell into much because I think throughout this morning, yesterday, today, it's very clear from the fact that for any given catchment, uh, we have a number of development activities which are responsible for uh, water quality deterioration, but as well the health degradation of the river. Uh, there's no exception with um, the Orange River in Namibia uh, because we also have these development activities in this particular river and uh, one may wish to sum up all the development activities at land use based kind of activities. Um, in a nutshell, this is uh, where uh, we, we had our study and like you can see, is that we had a number of sampling points all along the river and from this particular map you also see some of um, land use including um, settlement, uh, river itself, road and also the location where settlements are and more importantly the irrigated area, the activities where you have irrigation activities. <coughs> uh, these are the uh, images which are just trying to portray uh, different views with regard to Orange River in Namibia. Um, you can see that this is the image trying to show the uh, picture of the river during uh, low flow uh, season. Uh, but again, uh, along the river we have also got what called informal settlement in a particular neighborhood called Oscar. Um, below here you see there this agricultural activity, mainly irrigation one and the type of crops that are being grown grape. Um, just like any other rivers, um, impoundment of water for um, uh, some activities is also taking place in the Orange River. In this particular case, the river is being regulated in the sense that uh, there's a weir construction that is going on there with the implication in the long run that the ecological system is going to be uh, affected. Um, fears are arising in terms of pollution. Uh, that's because of the use of agrochemicals in terms of fertilizer, fertilizers, herbicides, uh, because the, the scale of agricultural activities are on rise. And uh, like I'm saying, that um, the irrigation basically is on the flooding because we have about 50% of the irrigation is flooded. Uh, that's account for about 300 acres of irrigated um, area. But also uh, the future plans are that 
the irrigated area is going to be expanded up to 1,000. This is for Nordwa uh, neighborhood. But also, again, the, the other neighborhood, Oscar, um, it has the area for irrigated irrigation about 2,000. And uh, like I'm saying, it's, it's, we have the irrigation uh, activities going on there. Uh, the, the other issue with regard to this river is the sanitation, that no information on how much uh, waste water is at uh, disposal in the river. Uh, but again, with regard to sanitation facilities, some places they are there, but in some places you don't have therefore inadequacy. Uh, reports that are in place are suggesting the occurrence of eutrophication for drinking water treatment plants but also the upstream of the river, which is in South Africa. And uh, the other most important issue of concern here is the fact that the river is now under regulation in terms of construction of weir, which automatically is going to affect the ecological system. So these are the issues that are surrounding the um, Orange River. Uh, which one would broadly categorize that all the uh, causes that I've just presented to you are basically arising from ecological, I mean economic development as well as population growth. Therefore, we needed to do this study for only one major reason. Basically, we wanted to see how the river is faring in terms of the health. And here we try to use uh, bo um, biological, chemical, as well as physical parameter. But also the other most important thing, we, we are trying to link what is about happening with regard to uh, land use activities. Uh, this is the study that, I, the study that I've just explained to you. <coughs> uh, the river health was based on the assessment of the so-called ecological uh, integrity and like I said, we use the tool known as SAS, using bioassessment. A little bit of SAS. Um, this is, like I said, is, is South African scoring system. And it was meant to do assessment of the health of the river. Some little bit details about the, the SAS. It is qualitative tool in the sense that subjective, because sometimes one may wish to use professional judgment in terms of the type of macrophages and macrophages that we have, uh, using different types of habitats that you have in a particular river. It is a rapid field method. What is required in this particular technique is only the identification of macrophages at family level. Uh, it is considered to be an expensive technique for detection of water quality over periods. But also, um, it is basically for checking the ecological integrity. And throughout the literature that we had, there was a no study that was conducted at Orange River using this uh, method of SARS. In terms of sampling macrophytes, the protocol that was used, SARS protocol, uh, that's the net size that was used, most importantly was on the biotopes. We used three types of biotopes, the, the vegetation, both riparian as well as in-stream, or also the other biotope that was used was uh, sand, stones, whether they are in or out of the current. And the last biotopes that we used to get to the macrophytes were uh, macro invertebrates, sorry, uh, was gravel, sand, mud. And that is the period that we had, like I was saying, this was a master's student, and therefore we just tried to apply, and therefore we didn't have enough resource to do long-term um, measurement of the uh, macro invertebrates. However, there were eight sites in total. We only used six sites, because two sites lacked the habitat necessary for using this tool. Uh, and also we needed to co uh, complement the result that we have uh, from the Department of Water Affairs, it was already the hard collected. But the most important thing is that we didn't have that continuity of data series in terms of macro invertebrates. So even the results that I'm going to report were on a particular uh, time. And like I said, the SAS is based on the scoring system, it's subjective using professional judgment. One would just score anything from 1 to 15. 
based on this sensitivity um, um, score, but also the other most important thing, based on the macro invertebrates that were sampled, one would also establish the total number of uh, taxes that were had. And therefore, uh, we would also try to sum up the number of all the taxes, the taxa that had been identified we also needed to get one important parameter. This is called average score per taxa. Uh, you, you have total score for a particular habitat, and also you identify the total number of taxa, and then you need to get how much each taxa has scored. This is what's called average score per taxa. That is something that could be used using the, um, the, the framework that is coming there. So um, how would you now determine the health for a particular site? And here, I must emphasize one thing. As far as the, the health assessment of rivers is concerned, it's not just like you get the health for entire stretch of the river, but for a particular stack, site where you did the macrophytes, uh, uh, macro invertebrate sampling. I'm sorry, macrophyte is just coming. I don't know why. So um, once you have determined the average score per taxa, you'd also compare with total score for SAS, and then you'd also have the category ranging anything from A or to E. And there is where I would say what is the health of um, a river for a particular site. And this is an example that I would like to, um, the, the, the most important slide for me is this one and the following. Because like I'm saying, the first thing you need to determine the average score per taxa, uh, that is based on the score, that is on x axis, that is on y axis, but on x axis, there is where now you have the total score for um, SAS. If, for instance, you get your ASPT, say, 5, and if it happens your SAS score is 100, you need to just uh, project this horizontally and that one vertically where they are meeting is where now we would just like to get the category of that particular aspect. So like I'm saying, you have anything from A to E, F. But what is it that we have as interpretation for this category? Uh, this is also what we have in ecological categories, which is normally used for interpretation of SAS. So using ACPT and the SAS score, if you get category A, that indicates for a particular site that your river is natural, meaning that there's no any modification. So if, for instance, you get your ecological category F, uh, that is what you're saying critically modified, and you have what you call critically modified is an alarming that something has to be done. And we also have the color coding in as far as interpretation of the SAS itself is concerned. Uh, physical chemical parameters we um, analyzed using the normal method. We had those in situ parameters and the one that we needed to analyze in the lab. We, of course, the most important thing was standard methods were used for this particular case. Uh, the, the, the impact of land use and water quality, um, it was a little bit of uh, remote sensing. And these are the procedures that we used just getting the images for two different times, 2000, 2010, 12. And also we do the processing that are normally carried out with regard to all uh, the remote sensing techniques. It's quite a lot of the procedure, so I don't want to go into detail for each particular case. Uh, now, in terms of results, so how is it that we now determine the health of the river? So we, we had different times, and also we, we had different sites. So OR1, OR4, OR5, these are different sites where we sampled macroinvertebrates. There is one, for instance, for the period November, we had such a score 64. The number of taxa that we had was 13, and the average score per taxa, that was about 4.9. Uh, using the, 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 the bands that I had, there is when I would say for this particular site, 
the, the river would categorize as in C, so fairly modified or something like that. So we did it for um, a number of sites that we had and also for different times. And there is when I will just try to describe the health of the river. So summarizing is that when you see you have low uh, SAS score and ASPT, it is the indication that you have dominant pollution tolerant families, uh, meaning that in a way the, the river has been polluted. You only have families of some organisms or macro invertebrates that are able to tolerate that level of pollution. And also, um, in some areas, sites, they are very sensitive families. That's because of the, 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 the nature of the site, which was not uh, heavily polluted. Um, it's also not bad that in as far as macrophyte pollution indicators, we have what is, you have what you call pollution indicator, and also the type of pollution there are. For instance, if you see an increased ratio of worms, stoneflies, migates to insects, is saying that you are now having uh, nutrient enrichment. So it goes all the way down where you have reduced community richness an indication that the type of pollution there is heated effluent. Um, with regard to the, the physical chemical parameters, we'd like to run you through because there's one slide which is summarizing everything. But it's sufficient to uh, say that for different parameters, there was both temporal spatial variability in terms of this physical chemical because, you can, like you can see, this was the distance from the upstream. It goes all the way to downstream and they will see you have different uh, parameters, I mean, different values for temperature for different period of time. But interesting to see for temperature is that for period 2013, February, there's now you see the temperature is highest for all the sites. So it goes for conductivity as well, where we, we had here that for period 2012 November, uh, the, the, the values for conductivity were recorded to be the highest and the other values as can be seen there. pH as well, we had the um, highest values recorded for 2012 December and the rest of the values are as indicated. We also have... Okay. Okay. Um, the slides... Of course, we had a number of uh, these uh, parameters, turbidity, total dissolved solids, dissolved oxygen, uh, total phosphorus, uh, total nitrogen, chlorophyll A. And this is the, the, the slide which just tried to summarize because at the end of the day, despite the fact of recording of these values, we are interested to see whether these values are within or outside the standards. And here we used um, three standards. The, the Namibia has already got the guidelines for water quality and also we use South African standards and also United States Environmental Protection Agency. Through looking at this particular slide, you realize that there were only two parameters which were above the standards and that is turbidity. Uh, we needed to have the mean concentration for turbidity for the whole river and also chlorophyll A. But the rest of the parameters, they are within the standards. Um, the influence of land use activities, water quality, we see that from 2002 to 2012, there was no significant difference in terms of uh, increase in acreage for irrigation, because for 10 years, there was a difference of only 38 hectares, not much. And uh, that is, here's where I would see the land use for 2002, where the total irrigated area was 3,500. And the land use for 2012, the irrigated area was 37, neighborhood 3,700. So. so in conclusion, we are saying the bioassessment method using SAS um, is telling us that the river, Orange River, is in category C, suggesting that the river is a moderately modified system with fairly water quality. Um, in terms of spatial variability, we wouldn't see it to be that much significant, 
though there was significant, but I think the, the variation was less. Um, physical chemical parameters that were tested, they are indicating the quality of water. It still felt good, though some slight levels of deterioration are being observed. Although there was no major changes observed in um, land use activities, especially agriculture, the slight water quality changes detected in the river could be the result of combined effects, land use as well as low flows, which is the natural phenomenon that is normally occurring in the river. And therefore, the study that we conducted could not be able to establish whether the land use activities alone in the study had the influence in the water quality. This is all what I want to share with you. Thank you very much.